Hi everyone, welcome back to Bible in a Year. My name is Natalie and today we are on day 314. I am so happy that you're here today and I hope that your day is going great. We are going to be reading out of 1 Chronicles chapter 11, Joel chapter 2, and then we're going to close out our day with Revelation chapter 10. They're giving us a little bit of a break today by not um, combining chapters, so I'm grateful for that. Um, I feel I kind of need to apologize. apologize. I don't know if apology is the right word, but um, I have been a little, um, what's the word, a little down the last few days of these readings. Um, in case you missed it, we did lose a family member and, um, you know, just the, the grieving of that process it's, um, you know, it, it, you just, you can't, you can't stop it. It just is there. So, um, what I did today was I went and got a little pick me up <laughs> and, um, physically it actually did help. So, um, there is that battle between our physical bodies and our spiritual bodies and spiritually, I've been um, in a little bit of a fog with Jesus because of the depth of uh, emotions that I've been feeling. Um, the person that we lost was my father, and um, he was sick for decades. And so um, kind of the shock of it, there's not going to be another decade of illness is just so wonderful uh, for me personally, but I'm also battling the relationship that he and I had. So I'm just all over the place, and um, I just want to say that um, for the purposes of this channel, I am going to try my best not to drag you all down with me, <laughs> okay? Um, one other little thing I would like to try personally is he did uh, stay with me for, it was a short time, for about six weeks, and um, he was not able to see very well. And so in the mornings, we would have our devotions and sit at the table, and the uh, devotions had wrapped up. We had finished up our reading, and, you know, I said, you know, what'd you think? How'd you like it? And he said, more, please. So we... Um, you know, continued on reading, and I don't know what he was needing to be filled with spiritually. It wasn't, the, the particular um, reading was not touching me personally, but um, he was in need of it. So, for um, myself, if you don't mind, I would like to dedicate this to, this day, to my dad. Day 314, First Chronicles chapter 11. Joel chapter 2 and Revelations chapter 10. And a little pick me up. It's a peppermint mocha, folks. How can you go wrong with that? All right, here we go. Then all Israel gathered themselves to David to Hebron, saying, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. In times past, even when Saul was king, it was you who led out and brought in Israel. Yahweh your God said to you, You shall be shepherd of my people Israel, and you shall be prince over my people Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and David made a covenant with them in Hebron before Yahweh. They anointed David king over Israel according to Yahweh's word by Samuel. David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, also called Jebus, uh, Jebus, and the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, were there. The inhabitants of Jebus said to David, You will not come in here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. The same is David's city. David had said, Whoever strikes the Jebusites first shall be chief and captain. 
Joab, the son of Zariah, went up first and was made chief. David lived in the stronghold, and therefore they called it David's city. He built the city all around, from Milo even around, and Joab repaired the rest of the city. David grew greater and greater, for Yahweh of armies was with him. Now these are the chief of the mighty men whom David had, who showed themselves strong with him in his kingdom, together with all Israel, to make him king, according to Yahweh's word concerning Israel. This is the number of the mighty men whom David had, Jashabim, the son of Hashmonite, the chief of the thirty. He lifted up his spear against three hundred and killed them at one time. After him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the ah Ahite, who was one of the three mighty men. He was with David at Pastamim, and there the Philistines were gathered together to battle, where there was a plot of ground full of barley, and the people fled from before the Philistines. They stood in the middle of the plot, defended it, and killed the Philistines, and Yahweh saved them by great victory. Three of the thirty chief men went down to the rock to David, into the cave of Adullam, and the army of the Philistines were encamped in the valley of Rephim. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was in Bethlehem at the time. David longed and said, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. The three broke through the army of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, took it, and brought it to David. But David would not drink any of it, but poured it out to Yahweh and said, My God forbid me that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of these men who have put their lives in jeopardy? For they risked their lives to bring it. Therefore he would not drink it. And the three mighty men did these things. Abishai, the brother of Joab, was chief of the three, for he lifted up his spear against three hundred and killed them, and had a name among the three. Of the three, he was more honorable than the two, and was made their captain. However, he wasn't included in the three. Benaniah, the son of Jehida, the son of a valiant man of Kabzil, who had done mighty deeds, killed the two sons of Ariel of Moab. He also went down and killed a lion in the middle of a pit on a snowy day. He killed an Egyptian man of great stature, five cubits high. In the Egyptian's hand was a spear like a weaver's beam, and he went down to him with a staff, plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and killed him with his own spear. Benaniah, the son of Jehida, did these things, and had a name among the three mighty men. Behold, he was more honorable than the thirty, but he didn't attain to the three, and David set him over his guard. The mighty men of the armies also include Eshel, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shemoth, the Herorite, Helez, the Pelonite, Ira, the son of Ikesh, the Tekoite, Ebiezer, the Anathoth Anathothite, Sibakai, the Hashathite, Eli, the Ahanite, Maharai, the Netophathite, Heled, the son of uh, Banna, the Def, uh, sorry, the Netophathite, Athai, the son of Rabbi of Gibeah, of the children of Benjamin, Benaiah, the Pyrethite, Hariah, mm, Harai, the, of the brooks of Gash, Abiel, the Arbathite, Asmavath, 
the Bahurmite, Elihaba, the Shalbanite, the sons of Hesham, the Gizanite, Jonathan, the son of Shagi, the Herarite, Ahiam, the son of Sakar, the Herarite, Eliphal, the son of Ur, Hefer, the the um, Mechorathite, Ahia, the Pelonite, Hezro, the Carmelite, Nerai, the son of Ezbi, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mib, uh, Mibhar, the son of Hagrai, Zelek, the Ammonite, Naharai, the Berathite, the armor bearer of Joab, the son of Zariah, Ira, the Ithrite, Gareb, the Ithrite, Uriah, the Hittite, Zabad, the son of Ahalai, Adana, the son of Sheza, the Reubenite, a chief of the Reubenites, and thirty with him, Hanan, the son of Mecca, Joshphat, the Mithnite, Uzziah, the Ashtarathite, Shama, and uh, Jael, the sons of Hotham, the Araharite, Jediel, the son of Shemrai, and Joha, his brother, the Zit, um, Tizite, Eliel, the Mahavite, and Jerabai, and Joshaviah, the sons of Elnam, and Ithma, the Moabite, Eliel, Obed, and Jeziel, the Mesobite. And again, I am so sorry if I miss. I am so sorry I mispronounced many of those names. <laughs> there is no if. <laughs> no. All right, Joel chapter 2. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahweh comes, for it is close at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. As the dawn spreading on the mountains, a great and strong people, there has never been the like. Neither will there be any more after them, even to the years of many generations. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yes, and no one has escaped them. Their appearance is as the appearance of horses, and they run as horsemen. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains, they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devours the stubble, like a strong people set in battle array. At their presence, the peoples are in anguish. All faces have grown pale. They run like mighty men. They climb the walls like warriors. They each march in his line, but they don't swerve off course. One doesn't jostle another. They each march in their own path. They burst through the defenses and don't break ranks. They rush on the city. They run on the wall. They climb up into the houses and they enter in at the windows like thieves. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and the moon are darkened, and the stars withdraw their shining. Yahweh thunders his voice before his army, for his forces are very great, for he is strong who obeys his command. For the day of Yahweh is great and very awesome, and who can endure it? Yet even now, says Yahweh, turn to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Tear your heart and not your garments. 
and turn to Yahweh your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, and relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meal offering and a drink offering to Yahweh your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the assembly. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those who nurse from breasts. Let the bridegroom go out of his room and the bride out of her chamber. Let the priests, the ministers of Yahweh, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare your people, Yahweh, and don't give your heritage to reproach, that the nations should rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? When Yahweh was jealous for his land and had pity on his people, Yahweh answered his people, Behold, I will send you grain, new wine, and oil, and you will be sanctified with them, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. But I will remove the northern army far away from you, and will drive it into a barren and desolate land, its front into the eastern sea, and its back into the western sea, and its stench will come up, and its bad smell will rise. Surely he has done these great things. Land, don't be afraid. Be glad and rejoice, for Yahweh has done great things. Don't be afraid, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness spring up, for the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in Yahweh your God, for he gives you the early rain in just measure, and he causes the rain to come down for you, the early rain and the latter rain as before. The threshing floors will be full of wheat, and the vats will overflow with new wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the great locust, the grasshopper, and the caterpillar. My great army which I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat and be satisfied and will praise the name of Yahweh your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people will never again be disappointed. You will know that I am among Israel and that I am Yahweh your God and there is no one else and my people will never again be disappointed. It will happen afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions and also on the servants and on the hands, handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of Yahweh comes. It will happen that whoever will call on Yahweh's name shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be those who escape, as Yahweh has said, and among the remnant those whom Yahweh calls. Verse 32, it will happen that whoever will call on Yahweh's name shall be saved. It's that word, whoever, whoever calls. He's not saying those who have been trying the hardest or uh, those who are shocked into believing or those who, you know, are ill or those... It's, it will happen that whoever will call on Yahweh's name will be saved. We're not in the business of judging. He said it. 
It will happen that whoever will call will be saved. Okay, Revelations chapter 10. I feel like the microphone might be making noises on the zipper. I can hear it in my ear. I'm hoping, hoping it's not coming through the mic because I am not recording this day again. <laughs> There's not enough peppermint mocha in the city for me to do it again. Sorry, I hope you can't hear it. Revelation chapter 10. I saw a mighty angel coming down out of the sky, clothed with a cloud. A rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun and his feet like pillars of fire. He had in his hand a little open book. He set his right foot on the sea and his left on the land. He cried with a loud voice as a lion roars. When he cried, the seven thunders uttered their voices. When the seven thunders sounded, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from the sky saying, Seal up the things which the seven thunders said, and don't write them. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land lifted up his right hand to the sky and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it, and there will no longer be delay. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, then the, ma the mystery of God is finished as he declared to the servants of the prophets. The voice which I heard from heaven again speaking with me said, Go, take the book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the land. I went to the angel, telling him to give me the little book. He said to me, Take it and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter, but your mouth it will make sweet as honey. I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it. It was as sweet as honey in my mouth. When I had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. They told me, you must prophesy again over many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. Would I have been brave enough to go up to that angel and say, hand me the little book. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Well, that was for you, Dad. And I think he would have really enjoyed reading all three. So I'm glad I got to do that with all of you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please listen to the words and mull them over in your mind. You know, um, over all these days, the 314 days that we've been together, we have been reading a lot in the Old Testament and a lot about war and, and fighting. And you may not know it, but all these accounts that we have read about, we have read about Palestine and Israel. We have read about Russia and Israel. We have read about Lebanon and Israel. And we have read about Iran and Israel and many other countries that are still in 2023 contentious. So, while it might feel like the world is spinning out of control, there's nothing new going on. This is all, today's news is pretty much old news. I think maybe what has changed is the um, information highway. We have access to the information within, you know, 20, 30 minutes. 
and there is a lot of world business going on coming at us every 20 to 30 minutes and I believe it is overwhelming please take heart that today's events even political events is nothing new all of this has been going on for centuries and the only way it's going to stop is when Jesus comes when is that gonna be he says we don't know I believe he said in Matthew not even he knows it's when God decides okay we're done with this <laughs> you guys are ridiculous down there we got to end it I'm coming and um, that's when it will stop so in the meantime we need to stay close to God we need to stay close to Jesus we have to have to read our Bibles every single day um, this past week has been or not even week it's only been since the past few days have been really difficult because my head is just not in the Bible it's really not I'm reading the words or I know I need to read the words and so I open it up and it, while it's not touching my heart as usual it is a beautiful distraction for my mind so I would encourage everyone to do the same thing get in your Bible every single day even if you don't feel like it because it is living and it can be a beautiful distraction so sorry I ramble and what could have been a very short day has probably turned to be very long thank you for joining me today please come on back for tomorrow which will be day 315 have the most wonderful day today and I will see you tomorrow.